Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Pastor Devin. I am the media pastor here at the Revival Center, and I know this is a little different setup than what normally happens with our Revival Worship videos on our YouTube page, but Pastor Josh came to me, had an awesome opportunity of saying, hey, why don't we look at a little different angle of what happens during our worship on our Sundays and Wednesdays, and one big part of that is the lights. And our lights here, you'll be able to see behind me here in a little bit, we're gonna explain kind of what we do. So you might be asking the question, why are lights a part of worship ministry? Why do they even matter? Well, one of our main things in our media ministry here at the church is that we believe that we want to create an environment and experience where people can connect to God. And I know a lot of times when people walk into worship services and maybe the lights are on really bright and there's this song, they don't really feel comfortable to maybe raise their hands or, or really enter into worship because it just doesn't feel like they can enter in. And so what we want to do, we don't do anything crazy. We just want to make sure that we set the stage, make sure that people feel as though they are able to worship God and feel free to do worship God the way that they desire, whether they need to raise their hands, maybe they'll kneel and pray, whatever the Lord is leading them to do. So that is mainly our heart behind the lights. We try to make it as a compliment, not as the main show. This is not just about we want to look cool and have things going. We want things to just invite people in to worship God. And so that's really what we do. It's run by a volunteer each and every service. And so if it wasn't for volunteer ministry, lights wouldn't even happen. But I tell you, it is a fun ministry. And you'll be able to see right in the video upcoming what we do, how it works, and just kind of the way that it looks from both sides, whether up here or on the stage. So thanks so much for watching this, and we hope that you learned a little bit about our lighting ministry. Well, as you can see right now, I'm sitting at our lighting system. We have two sets of systems here uh, that control both sets of lights. Right here, we call this our house lights. So these are just our lights that are in the ceiling, our normal lights that you'd be looking at. Uh, these are just the lights that you might see when you walk in. This doesn't really affect the stage per se. It's just kind of the, the lights if we want all of our lights on, which would be during a sermon, or if we want all of them completely off like a video, or kind of an in-between when people are coming in during worship. And so that's how we, how we do this. It's just a little touch screen right here that we take care of. Then right here, this is what we call our theatrical lights. These are the light systems that you see in the bars up top. This is gonna do all of our lights on the stage. This is what's gonna be, ha be happening during worship or you see it right on the people. This changes different colors, has things looking a little different. If we ever wanna do a spotlight or things like that, that is controlled right here through our theatrical lights. And so normally when a, a volunteer comes in, they have a light cue sheet that shows each and everything, whatever happens, you'll see, okay, if there's a video, we're gonna do something on the house lights and we'll do something on the theatrical lights. So we'll dive in real quick on how to use these and what they look like from outside. I wanna show a little bit about what the house lights look like. So when you walk into a general service, we have this setting right here. It's a funeral setting. I know that sounds kind of weird to be starting out your setting called funeral with every one of your services. It's just a general light setting that has a lot of the lights on in the service, but it doesn't have anything on on stage. And so you're looking at bright in the aisles and all the aisles upstairs as well. So that way anybody's coming in, they're not trying to, you know, find their seat and tripping over anybody or having trouble getting in and finding an empty seat. And so this will happen all the way up until about 15 seconds before our countdown. Um, we have a very talkative church. We have people who love to be around each other. So we have to do kind of a visual cue of church is going to get started. Even though we do have a countdown going on, when people are in conversations, they are not going to really be noticing exactly when the countdown is going down. So that way they're ready for worship. At 15 seconds, we hit this video setting right here that puts everything to go dark. That way people realize, okay, service is getting started and then we are ready to worship. And so then of course we hit the worship setting right there. That is what's gonna get everybody going. It, it doesn't really have much of a difference. You might say, hey, was there really any difference there? Yes, we do have a tiny bit of light in our aisles and a little bit of light on the stairs. So that way, if people are getting in a little late, which I know church people are never late, of course. No, I'm kidding. Of course, there are people who are coming in late and we want them to be able to find their seat a little bit, but without having to have too much light. And then of course, our final setting that we normally have uh, coming out of worship service will be going to our sermon setting. So when we go in between any 
uh, from our sermon uh, and to our announcements and different things like that, you're going to have the house lights back up. This is a little bit less than our initial setting, but we want everybody to be able to see. And then, of course, we'll finish up with going to the altar. This is very similar to our worship setting. Down low, a little bit more lighting, but, uh, you know, it might not seem like a much of a difference. But once you factor in the theatrical lights, you can kind of see what exactly the purposes are. The only difference with our baptism setting, this is one that I didn't show, is just that our baptistry is lit up. But, of course, uh, we'll, we'll show that at some other time. But these are kind of the main settings that we use. We do have the ability to have other scenes in different pages. Uh, these we don't really use much in a particular worship service, but we just have these for maybe special services. Um, you'll see with our kids' Christmas play or different types like that, we'll use different house light settings. But for the most part, we try to keep it very simple for our Sunday morning and Wednesday night services, staying with those few house light settings. And so it's very easy. Touch screen, just click. If you think about it, it's just like a light switch. You just click the switch that you want and all the lights correspond. And so those are all, of course, set. When we program this switch, we have all of the lights available. Uh, you do have the ability with the one that we have to actually do different, uh, different zones and different faders. Um, but normally for a volunteer person, we're just gonna have these scenes and we're just going to move and, and go from there. So uh, that's it for what happens with the house lights. And then we're gonna jump into kind of a little bit more of the details of what it looks like with the theatrical lights. So as you can see right now, we are here at the theatrical light board. Um, we're just looking here at the screen for now. This is what our volunteers look at um, and how we are gonna be viewing it. So you see we have our scenes one through 10 up here, starting there, going across. You can actually find all of the different ranges or we have the capability of having up to 40 different scenes. Um, so as you can see, you can click this range button, it goes the next 10, the next 10, and the next 10. So it goes all the way through. We have different settings for, for different purposes. Um, we'll start off with just one of our generic ones, which is for our video setting. This is going to be obviously one of our least settings here. Um, you can see that it's only got a little bit of light, a little bit of blue light, so that way the screens can show up the very best way that they can. And so this is how we kick off our worship service. As you saw earlier on the house lights, we go all the way dark on the house with clicking the video setting, and then we do this video setting as well. So it starts off here, gets everybody in the mood to worship, and then we'll go to like kind of one of our brighter settings. Let's just say we were on a Sunday morning and we were wanting to be a little bit brighter and go to like a red setting right here. So as you can see, we have uh, a little bit of mainly white light there in the middle and then have some red light uh, accenting it. So this would go and this would actually go in hand in hand with whatever background it is. So as you can see, we have different colors on there. We have red, green, yellow, blue, purple. And so we match that with whatever background we're going to be using. Now on this setting, we actually have the where you can see the choir on. We do have different settings for whether we have a choir or no choir. Um, and those are just designated um, by how we choose them. If you look, uh, if you are a volunteer, you wouldn't have to be making these choices. You would walk in, you would see your lighting cues, and you would just go to the cue that's next. So right here, you can see Worship Red. Um, if we were doing a Wednesday setting, this would be a Wednesday setting that's also red. It's a little bit different, but it's you're looking at kind of the same uh, colors. You're looking at the same base. And so we obviously have different colors. If you're looking at, let's say, a Wednesday setting, and you were looking at green, this would be an example of that. If you were looking at purple, you're looking at this right here. So you see the subtle differences, the differences between the, the purple, the accent colors, and everything that goes there. So we just follow along with that, matching everything to the backgrounds. Uh, we always keep our blues and our purples for the end. And so we do that because, let's do a blue setting right here, 
The main reason for that is because they're kind of the lighter colors for our songs that we usually end a song service with a slower song, a more worshipful song. And so we want lights that, that represent that. We don't want a bright red setting uh, when you're trying to sing a, a very... Uh, spiritual song it just doesn't just doesn't feel the same way right and so that's kind of how we pick and we choose we go along with these and so that's how it's selected so all the volunteers gonna do is they're gonna click the purple uh, which designates whatever scene if they need to go and range they'll go through like that we do have different settings for of course our sermon as you can see here number four is our sermon that lights up most of the stage for whenever Pastor Jason or whatever guest speaker we have is walking across the stage. You can see most of the middle of the stage is, is light. And then for our altar time, similar, but obviously a little bit more down. So that way when people are at the altar, um, they feel as though they are comfortable to go down, to pray, to worship, uh, to do whatever they need to do. One special setting, we do have many, but one that I do want to point out is right here, our spotlight setting. As you can see, it's just a little spotlight right in the middle. This might happen if we're entering into the service with like a special prayer, or let's say somebody is getting baptized, and there's maybe only one or two people, and so they'll fit right there in that spotlight. So this just kind of puts a point of emphasis just to change things up a little bit. You know, we, we think that lighting kind of points to what's happening in the service. It's just to add into what if we have a very intimate moment of prayer, we don't need all the lights on. We don't need all the lights on the stage. We just need to maybe see the person who's going to pray and move forward with that. So that's how it goes. And then the last thing I'm going to go into is kind of the capability of the board that we do have. Uh, this is the ETC color source. And so we use it. We actually have full reign of all of our lights. And so I'll go into that. You can so kind of the last thing I'm going to go over here is looking at how we are able to build out scenes as well as how we're able to control individual lights. So of course for a Sunday morning service, we're not gonna be doing this. We wanna make a scene, we wanna make things easier uh, for our volunteers. But if we are trying to build and construct things, um, we can go right here to our channel button. And as you can see, the, the colors here changed. And so what that did is that showed our lights. Now we have 18 lights currently hooked up here. Obviously you can see we have the capability of doing 40, but right now we only have 18 in. Whenever we do some changes to our lights, we might add some in. And so you can look here and you can actually control individual lights. So right now I have them all cleared out. If I did a, if I changed a scene, let's say I went to this worship purple, as you can see the worship purple went and you can look here at your different icons of each uh, light and you can see actually the colors that they are set to. And so what I can do is I can look through, I can select individual lights. What I can do is I can raise or lower these lights accordingly to how strong I want them. I can even touch right here on the system and change the colors. And so what I'm gonna do really quick, I'm gonna clear out, so that way you can see these changes a little more uh, drastically, is let's say I select light seven here, which is one of our center lights. I'm gonna push up on it. I'm gonna go all the way down first because it, that's it works like that. You have to completely zero it out first. When I pull it down, I'm gonna go up, and as you can see, that light number seven is growing brighter and brighter. So I can adjust that to however bright I want. And then, like I said, I can just click here. Let's say I wanted this light to be a blue light. So I just click the color blue, and boom, that one's adjusted to blue. Now I can do this for any of the lights. Let's say I want to do that. Now you can do multiple lights at the same time by just selecting both of them. And as you can see, any adjustment that you're making, you're gonna have both of them. So then of course, any adjustment to colors, it's gonna to happen to both of those as well. So let's just keep them white for now. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust one. Let's just actually do number nine. So this is gonna be right there toward the middle, looking at the bottom of the stage, right? So you're just gonna be trying to create, let's say we wanted to create something that's only looking at the front or bottom of the stage. So I'm gonna select the ones that are done. You can actually see on the screen, I know you can't really see this right now, but we actually have it arrayed out. So if you're looking here on the screen, you can look up at your lights and see exactly one through 18, which ones you're looking at. So let's say I wanted to bring up 10, and then eight and 11 are our spotlights. So they're gonna go a little further on the stage, and so, as you can see, they're moving up and down. 
if you don't know if you can already notice they get a lot brighter than some of our other lights so we obviously keep those down a little bit so that kind of shows a little bit how you can do that then we can if we get right to where we exactly want each of our settings then of course we can record save it in any of the 40 settings and then that will be from then on one of our scenes and so uh, that's the best way to do it it's really simple you can do the sliders like this you can also set exact levels to terms of percentages on this side so if you want to be exact you're not worried about you know little levers or anything like that you can do there and really if you wanted to you could not use scenes you know you want to do a spotlight really quick so you just click the spotlight you go for it and then you're rolling like that obviously that's really hard for volunteers who aren't that familiar with the board so that's why we do scenes of course, if you have any other questions about the media ministry or about the lights in general, you can obviously come to me. You can see what's happening. And of course, anybody who you are watching this video said, hey, I can do that. I can click the scenes. I can do that. Come see us. We would love to have you volunteer with us because, hey, what this does is this really adds and is an important part of our worship services. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video.